So hi, Micro Hunter here. Well, uh, first of all, I hope that you apologize the mess that I have here on my table. I'm currently trying uh, to do an LED conversion of one of my microscopes and I didn't uh, clean up the desk yet, but I wanted to make this video in any case because I received a question, uh, pretty straightforward question. What is the best microscope uh, that I can buy to do face, not face contrast, but dark field microscopy? I'm currently also working on um, yeah, a dark field project where I show you how to make dark field filters in a different video. And what is the second best microscope? Um, so of course I came up with a whole list uh, of possible points here. Um, and I'm going to go briefly through this list. If you want to uh, dig into the details, maybe also into the technical depths of this topic, um, I did make a separate longer uh, podcast episode. I link it down below in the description because YouTube videos are generally a little bit shorter and the podcast is yeah, quite a bit longer. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you're interested, please check out the link. Um, when I started to uh, put together the points here, I, um, I'm going to talk about those points. Um, I found out something and uh, I'm just going to show you. So don't worry, I'm going to uh, go back to this main topic here. It's connected. Um, this here is a solution of methylene blue. It's a standard uh, solution used for staining. It is uh, called Löffler's solution because uh, a guy called Friedrich Löffler, back in the 19th century, um, he developed uh, the formulation here. So it's methylene blue, but uh, it's basically mixed. And the recipe is according to Friedrich Löffler. Uh, of course, I had to check uh, out uh, the website, uh, the Wikipedia, and I found a picture of him. Here, here is the picture. And of course, the thing that really interested me was his microscope. And so if you zoom in, you're going to see it's a binocular microscope. I mean, we're talking about here over 100 years ago, okay? So this microscope's uh, yeah, qu quite old in that sense. Binocular microscope, maybe three or four objectives and a, uh, a mirror. Well, if you look very carefully, there's a mirror there. Um, this uh, microscope uh, must have been, must have cost a fortune. And uh, Friedrich Löffler is honored uh, because he has significantly contributed to hygienics and bacteriology. For example, he was the guy who um, was in charge of uh, pushing his uh, village or his city to actually build uh, and improve uh, the sewage system uh, because people were against that. How can you be against the development of a sewage system? Okay, so in any case, that's a uh, Big biography uh, back a couple of years ago. They celebrated uh, his uh, bas basically his hundred. Uh, they mem not celebrated, but they, they remembered his hundred years um, of of, uh, of passing away. Um, and there are some university institutes named according to him. Important guy. Okay, back to microscopes here. The guy contributed significantly, and I'm absolutely sure that his microscope that he had, which was over a hundred years ago was definitely not better than the low cost microscopes that you can get these days. I'm almost sure that those microscopes that I have here um, are performance wise, probably better than the microscopes of 100, 150 years ago. You know, we have modern materials, uh, modern optics, uh, LED lamps, all of these things, probably according to image quality at least, I'm quite sure that those microscopes, yeah, you could see pretty much, yeah, probably better even. Yeah. Um, so what is my point here? Um, the overall point is, is it doesn't depend uh, only so much on microscope quality, but what you do with that. And this guy, Friedrich Löffler, he significantly contributed uh, to his community, to uh, science, yeah? um, to the field of microbiology with the equipment that he had. And I encourage everyone um, who also wants to pick up microscopy as a hobby, um, sure, Hardware can be important. Yeah? It's in, also in a part of the, the hobby, but don't overemphasize it. This is kind of my, 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 my message in, in this video. Yeah? Um, it depends what you do with the things and the enjoyment that you get out of uh, using mic microscopes. But uh, I'm still going to answer the question. And um, yeah, here it is. I would like to quickly run through the main points here. What microscope quality can mean. And uh, you, it's then up to you to then decide a little bit what is more important for me. Uh, I tell you what the difficulty is. That what is good quality for one person might not be good enough quality for another person. That's one thing. Um, and sometimes even we who are using microscopes might not be fully aware of what is important. Okay, because we simply might not have enough experience ourselves. Um, so I'm going to give you concerning this also an advice uh, later on. Okay, I'm just going to quickly run you through the topics now. It, of course, it can refer to optical quality, um, especially if you want to take photographs, uh, then uh, optical quality is important. 
you've got plan objectives, then the image is, is clear and crisp all the way to the corner of the field of view. It's important for photography. It can refer to mechanical quality. Um, yeah, you won't be able to see that, <laughs> how good the mechanical quality of a microscope is, unfortunately. Um, it can refer to the ability of, of maintenance. Not every microscope can be easily taken apart and maintained. Um, so this is uh, one thing as well. It can refer, quality can refer to ergonomics. Uh, so especially if you're sitting many hours behind the microscope, um, it's important that the microscope uh, is designed ergonomically. For example, this can include uh, focus knobs that are relatively low. I'm just gonna, I don't know, use this here as an example, if you can see it. If it's relatively low here, then you're able to place your hand on the table while focusing. And especially if you have to sit behind the microscope for many hours, it's much more comfortable this way to be able to also rest your hand on the table. And if it's too high up, you just have to put a book beneath your arm or your hand and it's also gonna work. Um, yeah, the illumination system. Uh, so um, how even is the illumination system? How bright is the illumination system? Um, possibly even does it have Köhler illumination? Actually, mostly more, only more expensive microscopes have that, which is important uh, also for photography. If, if you want to really uh, get the very last bit of quality out of, a, of an image, uh, Köhler illumination reduces image glare and uh, reduces glare and gives you a slightly better image contrast. It can also refer to, and I think that's a big one now, it can refer to quality can refer to upgradability as well and here we were actually looking beyond the actual microscope but we we're looking at the company and the question is, is does the company provide accessories for the microscope is it possible to buy a replacement objectives um, if something breaks is the company able to provide uh, yeah different individual parts yeah if i don't know if if, if um, yeah, there are, there are a few plastic parts in modern microscopes, but there are a few plastic parts sometimes. Let's say, for example, the filter holder. If this breaks off, can I get a new filter holder? Um, if it's not even sold, uh, then yeah, it's not upgradable yeah. um, as much. Yeah. Um, it can refer to the overall design quality, especially can uh, if you want to showcase your microscope. Um, if you have got, let's say, uh, patients or customers or clients, um, or maybe you want uh, to place the microscope somewhere where other people are able to see it. In this case, maybe also brand and, and, and design might matter. It's probably one of the le lower, least important aspects, but it might play a role. And of course, last but not least, it can refer to quality, can refer to personal preference as well. Um, is there some kind of an emotional connection to your microscope because you're yeah, connecting certain memories with it? And because there are so many factors and parameters, and maybe some of you are able to find even more um, aspects here, it's really difficult to say, okay, what is now the best microscope? Um, and very often you see um, in web forums, um, you see that uh, people make a microscope recommendation. I've done so myself. And then other people criticize this because they say, well, actually, you should not be buying these microscopes. You should invest more money and get a better one because the quality is not good enough. Yeah? But the problem is there is no limit. Yeah? Um, that's the thing. Um, light microscopes go up in cost and price unlimited. Yeah? Um, so the question really is, is, where do you draw the line? And the difficult thing is, is, okay, people have a problem sometimes because they themselves don't know. Should I invest now a little bit of money now? Is this going to be good enough for me? Yeah? Or should I invest a little bit more money now to get a slightly better microscope? Yeah? Difficult question sometimes because people can't compare because they are just starting the hobby and they don't have a basis of comparison. I understand that this is a problem. Um, so my suggestion here as a promise is the following. Uh, again, some people might disagree. I'm open for criticism here as well. But at the beginning, when you're starting off and when you're not really sure about it, uh, my advice is, is don't invest too, mu too much money, but use um, the microscope, the beginner's, the beginner's microscope that you might have. Use this to learn. And then later on, you can always buy a better device, uh, which takes other factors into consideration. If all of these things uh, say, okay, too much talk, I just want to have an answer, then I'm going to tell you the following contact one of the four big microscope companies, the big four as I used to call them, um, no specific order, Olympus, Zeiss, Nikon and Leica, um, and get them, you have, uh, get an offer, you have to actually uh, contact them per email or telephone and you uh, request an offer for a microscope and they will send you an offer. And usually you get a letter oh, yeah, and with all of the different parts um, listed on it because they will put the microscope together for you, so to say, yeah? because it's highly modular. 
So it's yeah, it, it's not out of the box. It's yeah, they put it together and then they sell you the different parts and they assemble it for you, or you might have to assemble it yourself. Yeah. Um, so this is the thing, and then maybe uh, the cost uh, will actually make it very clear to you whether yeah, it's even an option for you. Yeah. So go to their websites, check out what uh, models they have um, in the entry level sector, um, and contact them to get an offer. Um, and then you can be then you have a microscope uh, that covers most of these aspects, if not all of them. Okay, maybe except personal preference and, and cost and price that did not include here. Yeah, and maybe this answers uh, then some questions automatically where you're going to say, well, they're too expensive anyway because um, a significantly cheaper microscope is able to do the same things for me and is able to provide the same enjoyment. So you see, difficult question. Um, and I go back to the guy here, Friedrich Löffler. Yeah, um, probably he had completely different uh, quality criteria in his mind um, because he was in research and in medicine. He needed a microscope uh, to get his job done, um, I, I suppose. And uh, as we can see, he significantly contributed to the field uh, of health and microbiology and science, even with the devices uh, that they had at that time. I'm going to call it quits again. Happy microbe hunting as always, and see you around next time. Bye-bye.